Hello, I'm Roger Bisbee from Skill Builder, and I want to talk to you about some changes that have taken place in the British standard for tiling. This is the British standard 5385, and the changes took place in June 2018. And what they now say is that basically tiles are getting heavier, so they've revised the standard to make sure that people are not attaching heavyweight tiles to unsuitable backgrounds, or if they are attaching them, they're doing it in the right way. Now, plasterboard is still the most popular substrate for tiling onto because it's cheap, because it's easy. That's what people tend to use. Now, interestingly, if you are tiling in a wet area, the British Standard also says now that that area has to be tanked. Now, if you're using plasterboard, it means you've got to coat that plasterboard with a tanking membrane. You've got to do the edges because the water can creep up through the edge. But even if you're using moisture resistant plasterboard, it still needs to be tanked. So the other important change is that plasterboard is capable of taking a weight is deemed to take a weight of say 20 kilos per square meter. Now the British standard is saying that your tile if it exceeds 70% of what the substrate will take then it needs to be continuously bedded. That means a notch trail bedding over the whole surface area. So the plasterboard will take 20 kilos. We've got a tile here which is a 10 millimeter porcelain tile. This is coming out at about 18 kilos a square meter. So if you do the maths on that, you can see that you haven't got that margin. So you need to make sure that that's continuously bedded with a notch trowel and pressed down firmly to do that. But bear in mind that that is when the plasterboard is dry, that it is when it's working at its most efficient and it's still working at the critical edge of its limits. So it makes it even more important that you use good tile backing board. Now, some people would say, okay, I use marine ply. What's wrong with using marine ply? Well, in actual fact, the new British standard has also outlawed plywood or any kind of timber, because what they're saying is on the vertical surface, the plywood or the timber is not suitable. One thing it can delaminate, the other thing is that it supports mold growth. So if any moisture does get in through those grout lines, it very quickly sets up a mold growth, which destroys the adhesive and the grout and so on. So that's outlawed. We can forget that. You can still use it on floors, by the way, if you want to, but on walls, it's an absolute no-no. So everything points towards using a proprietary tile backing board, such as this elements board. And it really is the ideal surface for the job. Now, interestingly, Although this is a lightweight board, and you can see that it's got this foam cell in it, it's covered with a polymer adhesive and a mesh, which makes it the ideal surface for tiling onto. So much so that this will take in excess of 60 kilos per square meter. Now, if we look at our tile, we can even go heavier than this, which is 18 kilos a square meter, but you can see that we're well within our margin. If you can achieve 65% coverage, that's perfectly permissible. So working with this board allows you to have that little bit of margin. Now, I hope that's cleared something up because I know a lot of people say you can never dot and dab, you can never do anything but notch trail through, and it all depends on the substrate you're using. And it's important that when you're applying tile adhesive with a notch trowel that you do it in straight lines because if you use swirls, that means the air can get trapped in the tile adhesive and reduce the contact. Now, interestingly, even though we've used the approved method of applying the tile adhesive with a notch trowel, and we've even moved the tile slightly sideways to increase contact, you can see here that we still haven't achieved 100% contact on plasterboard. So you can see that on the elements board using the notch trowel, we've achieved what you would say was virtually 100% coverage, even though we don't really need it. Now looking at this dot and dab method, you can see that we've achieved over the required 65% Okay, it's not the most perfect method, but in reality, because walls aren't always straight, that's what a lot of tilers are having to do. There is a difference between what's put down in a standard and what's actually done on site. 
So the ideal solution is to use the tile backer board to get your wall absolutely 100% flat and plumb so that if you're tiling you can go on with the minimum of adhesive and produce a good contact. So interestingly it could be argued that by using a tile backer board you're actually saving on adhesive. So what have we learned here? Well, we've learned that it's in the preparation and by using the tile backer board, we can actually achieve the British standard a lot more easily.